What is going on, guys? You're listening to WSOU. I am Nick here with a guest, Ben Leonetti of Lakeshore and a former founding member of Emir. So uh, a lot of cool stuff going on with you guys. Uh, I got to hear the EP, uh, and I'm really, really enjoying it. Uh, so I wanted to get a little bit more background because I couldn't find too, too much about it. Uh, it's called 41. Uh, first thing, obviously, is is there a release date yet? Because I couldn't find one. Uh, yeah, there is a release date. Uh, we actually uh, just put it up for pre-order uh, on the 3rd, and now the release is going to be on the 21st. The reason why uh, a lot of people aren't able to find a bunch of stuff on us is because this all kind of happened really quick, and it's still happening pretty quick. Right. Um, and uh, we're just kind of flying by the seat of our pants. Uh, with this one, but it's going good. So, but every, everything will be up and out, and uh, you know, pretty soon here. And obviously, like if you guys, you know, are searching for something, I mean, always keep in touch with uh, with uh, the website lakeshoreofficial dot com, and that's where like all the official news is because I know there is some uh, confusion and uh, all that stuff. So, <laughs> so sorry about that. Of course, but um. People have heard a little bit already. There's some stuff out there, especially you have the, the video for History is Up. And uh, I wanted to talk about um, the direction for this project because obviously people know you um, from your time with Amir and that sound. And this is polar opposite in a lot of different ways. So I kind of wanted to talk about what kind of set you on this direction, trying to go a little bit more melodic, um, very, very catchy and, and very uh, atmospheric as well at the same time. So what... What was kind of, um, you know, your idea to get this together? I mean, there really was no idea. Okay. Uh, my, fa my father was in a band, um, and so we grew up around musicians and going to shows when we were in diapers. And when me and my brother started um, writing for this project, um, it was just all bets were really off. Um so with history, yeah, it's a little bit more, uh, you know, radio rock friendly, mm -hmm. but uh, all the songs are just a pure reflection of who we are and how we feel. Um, the next song, Kings, is a little bit heavier. Right. Um, so for those fans of Emir, you might like that one. Um, but, you know, with every single song on this one, there's uh, six songs. Um, we just did what we felt you know, whether it was heavy or light or whatever. And, uh, you know, it seems to be working out. I mean, it's a very focused sound, but still we bring in a lot of elements and we just, uh, we didn't want to be held down by those, uh, you know, genre standards or like, right. you know, if we're heavy. We're supposed to be heavy. Or if we're radio rockers, it's like, no dude, we're in a band and we're musicians and we're going to do whatever we, we feel like doing, you know, as long as it feels good to us. Yeah, for sure. Definitely without having any boundaries, it makes things a lot easier and you can definitely do a lot more with it. Yeah, yeah. But uh, I thought it was interesting, though, hearing the uh, the actual product and then finding out that uh, Ken of Unearth produced it. And uh, you have some features on there from guys in, in heavy bands and then hearing the actual music. It was, it was interesting to see, um, you know, if you just read like the names of people who worked on this and then listened to it first time without knowing what you were going to hear it, it's definitely uh a very interesting uh you know one side and then the other side yeah i mean well like you said we got ken susie from unearth right uh who re who recorded it um and he's done bands like the contortionist yeah. and uh you know a bunch, bunch of awesome bands like that uh we had mark lewis master it he's more in the the metal world, I want to say, hardcore world, but he's done a lot of big stuff, too. Um, and then, obviously, with this next song, Kings, we have Carl from Misery Signals and Jesse right. uh, from the Tony Danza Tap Dance Extravaganza on it. And, I mean, again, it was just like we wanted to have fun with the product, and we felt right with working with these people. And, you know, even though it may be a step away from what, in mirror was we still wanted that that energy and that like you know because i mean we'll we'll always be hardcore kids at heart you right know? And, and just you know growing up listening to hate breed and deftone stuff like that um you know we just wanted to bring that metal energy to an album whether it's light or 
you know, whatever the case may be, we just wanted, um, you know, something that was still a reflection of us, you know, no matter what the sound. For sure. And now the title of the EP is 41, so I'm assuming there's obviously some kind of significance behind the number. So what exactly yeah. was the uh, idea behind that? Well, 41 is actually the house number that me and Joe grew up in. Okay. And uh, Lakeshore is actually the street right. that we grew up on. Okay. And it even it even goes down to the artwork. That artwork uh, is of a beach that... Um, that we grew up on. We were always kind of the poor kids in a rich town. Okay. And, uh, you know, that's where our, um, you know, musical influences, you know, came alive. And, uh, we figured what better place to start Lakeshore than where we started, you know? So we're keeping everything from the music to everything that is Lakeshore. We're, we're keeping it as pure, uh, and as real as, as possible. For sure. I really like that. And um, as well as I thought it was very interesting is there was, uh, I read in the little press release thing, the whole aspect of this EP being kind of fairy tale themed and having that background with the songs itself. So what kind of, uh, yeah. what exactly does that represent for you and what was the purpose of using that imagery? Well, I mean, it's not really imagery. We oh, just yeah. use some, sa we, you know, we just use some samples from um, like the Wizard of Oz. Okay. Uh, we did a little Alice in Wonderland thing. So there's a few things on there uh, that we wanted to sprinkle in. And really, it was just we wanted to get back to when, you know, like you had all these dreams of, of being a rock star or, you know, whatever you want to do with your life. And, you know, when you're growing up, I mean, I'm sure, you know, you watch some of those movies. And, you know, yeah. just with, like, some Disney influences and shit like that, it was just always like... um you know, they have a message of like, you know, follow your dream, you know, wish upon a star. And it's like, you know, as cheesy as that may be, it's like, it's absolutely true. You know, follow your heart, you know, chase your dreams. You know, you can do it if you really want to, you know. And uh, so we just sprinkled some of those that stuff in because it's like definitely nostalgic. People know what it is. And I think we worked it in a cool way. Um, to where that message of positivity, whether in the samples or in our lyrics, um, that message is, is um, really clear, you know, and it's a real positive message that we like, you know. Definitely, definitely. And uh, another thing I wanted to uh, ask you about was, is there uh, a timeline yet on seeing you guys out on the road yet? Um, well, the thing is, is like, like I said in the beginning of the interview, the, everything is kind of uh, Very, creeping up on yeah. us really, really, really fast, you know? Um, I mean, when we released just that first little clip of, um, of history, I mean, we had, like, uh, uh, this guy Trevor from Artery calling us, which he's now booking us, okay. um, uh, you know, the lawyers and everybody, so... We kind of, uh, and then with uh, Rock Sound, uh, yeah. Brian over there, he ended up doing an interview with us. Yeah, I saw um, that. And it just kind of like, we were planning on like getting a move on it, but like it kind of all like really happened fast. And so we're just keeping up. And right now we want um, people to really see what Lakeshore is about. Right now we only have one song out. Kings right. is coming out next week. Um, we're going to do a full album stream right before the release because um, we really want people to, to dive into what this band and what these songs are all about. Um, we do have some plans uh, to play some shows in the near future. Um, we're just really uh, you know, trying to get some ducks in a row and waiting for a few things to pan now. But like I said, you know, keep in touch with us on the Facebook or on our website and you know, as soon as we get the information in, you guys will have it. For sure. And that was a, another thing I wanted to mention. Like you said, everything's been kind of happening very quickly in a short span of time. I kind of wanted to know why now you started this project. You know, um, you haven't been in a mirror. It's been a while now that you and your brother left. Uh, so kind of what was going on between then and now where, um, you know, that this is the time where you're, you're, you're bringing this project out? Well, Emir was me and my brothers and right. even my family's like blood, sweat, and tears. I For mean, sure. that, like, I, I still consider that, like, my band. I don't care what anybody yeah. has to say about it. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I we put everything into that. And right. obviously, you know, it started in our basement. So after that ended, it was, uh, 
it was kind of a blow to me and Joe. Um, so I did some things, you know, I actually, I found the contortionist and, um, helped them get their record deal and their okay. management. Um, I did some, obviously I worked with suicide silence. I was with them all over the world for a few years. Um, but, uh, you know, after we kind of came out of the fog, um, and I moved back home from LA, um, it just, we just had this idea and we were like, fuck, oops, sorry. <laughs> we, were, we were, we were like, you know, just like, let's, let's do this thing. Um, and, uh, one thing led to another and we really liked what we were, what we were producing and, uh, it was all bets were off again. And we we're just like, you know what, we're going full steam ahead. And then we found, uh, you know, our singer, Sean Adams and, uh, the guitar player, Mitch Labuglio and, uh, our bassist, Chris Segovia and, us five have been just relentless, absolutely relentless over the past few months, uh, getting these things together. For sure. That's really interesting. So, um, that was something I wanted to mention too, is what kind of is, um, since you, you've been on, on a lot of different sides of things, you've seen different bands and different subgenres change over time. What's kind of your overall sense of where we are in this scene of music? Because obviously, um, you know, certain bands are doing certain things people are liking, certain bands are doing things people aren't. There's definitely a major shift I see in, yeah. in you know, hardcore, metalcore, deathcore, whatever you want to call it. You know, this whole yeah. change of, you know, people trying to go more commercial, whether or not it's the instrumentation or change in vocals, which I, I think a lot of people miss that, you know, a lot of the vocalists that are changing, it's not because, you know, necessarily they want more of a commercial sense. It's a, it just they physically can't you know, do it with their voice anymore. A lot of guys weren't using yeah. good technique. I think people miss out on that, but what's kind of your overall view, obviously coming from, uh, one of those bands. And then obviously now with the change in sound and seeing a lot of the other bands doing that, what's kind of your take on what's going on. And are you, are you happy with where things are? Do you think some things need to be reworked? Um, well, that's, that's a good question. I mean, honestly, uh, over the past few years, um, I feel like uh, there's just been an, an influx of bands For sure. that, uh, you know, I mean, granted, they're talented, they're working hard, but, like, they're all the bands sound the same, they look the same, their songs sound the same, there's just no inspiration. It's like, it's more of who can play the fastest, and it's like, no, nah, man, can you write a song? Or, and uh, I think that, you know, there's always going to be shifts in music, um, and I think that there definitely is that, um, more rock approach, um, that's hitting the, the scene right now. Um, some bands are doing it right. Some bands are doing it wrong, but with, you know, like I said, with me and Joe, um, it, it's nothing that we try to do or try to be or anything. It's just who we are and what we are. Um, so I feel like we're in a really good position right now. Um, you know, as one of one of the true bands, you know, even though it, this is all very fresh, I think that, uh, you know, in the, you know, once things come together a little bit more, the music's out there, um, you know, we, we ink the deal, all that stuff. Um, I mean, I, I feel good about our position. Uh, and I mean, that's, that's pretty much where we are. Yeah, no, definitely. Because even just like you mentioned, the few bands that you were working with, and almost all of them have kind of been a part of that whole shift, it seems like, too. Yeah, 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 absolutely. I mean, like, like I said, I mean, there's, there's definitely bands that are doing it right. There are bands that are trying too hard. But, you know, one of the best pieces of advice that I ever got was, if it's real, the world will feel. And, uh, you know, you could try as much as you want, but if it's not... Uh, if it's not pure, then people are going to notice, and you're you're only going to get so big. But uh, that's why with this project, I just said, you know, whatever is true to us, however we feel, that's what we're going to do, and uh, that's what we're doing. Definitely. And uh, I wanted to talk about it too because this was with the one song that is out right now, history. Uh, I remember when it came out, a lot of people, as soon as it came out, that was everyone was talking about it. Is how it has that connection lyrically to Amir. And uh, I unfortunately didn't get to listen to it before I saw those articles. So I went in listening to it kind of with that in my, you know, my brain of let me see if I could pick this out. And yep. I, I, I could see some similarities, but I almost, I think a lot of people blew it out of context. 
And I do know yeah. that it has been noted that you guys said that there is it, it is about, um, you know, the history and time that you had in Amir. But I think a lot of people were trying to say, like, you know, it, it, you're, you're trying to make hits at Frankie and whatnot. I didn't necessarily <laughs> see it. I think people were exactly. looking for clickbait and whatnot. But tell me a little That's bit from your perspective. Tell me a little bit more about the song, because I do know it has that connection to Amir. But I think a lot of people yeah. took it the wrong way. Yeah, well, that's exactly what it is. I mean, the second you say anything, I mean, obviously the news outlets are going to try and uh, cause a scene. You know, it's all clickbait. And, uh, you know, obviously the hardcore Amir fans aren't going to like it, uh, you know, just because it's completely different than Amir. And it's like, whatever. I mean, we're just going to take it and we're going to run through whatever you want to say. But, I mean, the song, I mean, dude, like you got to realize, like, Emir was a huge part of our lives, oh, you know, sure. and that's just the way it is. And music is a reflection of us and, and whoever, whoever is a musician. And with each song, you know, you have a little different feel. And it just so happens that, um, you know, we wanted to touch upon our history with music. It's really not a dig at anybody. Um, it's more generalized. Um and it's more of a positive message really about where we're going rather than about looking back, you know? Um, and you know, it, it was just between, it really wasn't even the subject matter. That was the reason why we wanted to put it out first. It was really just because we loved the song. Yeah. It's a good you song. Know? Yeah. Yeah. But, um, because of that, I think that's very interesting how fans can be so polarizing and, you know, take person, you know, one person's side compared to another, I always try to yeah. be very, you know, you know, open with it. You know, I actually have an Amir hoodie on right now. I didn't even realize it until a little while ago. <laughs> but, um, you know, I yeah. love their new record. I love your guys' music. You know, obviously, you know, I don't know you guys personally, so I don't know uh -huh. your individual, you know, relationships with each other. But from a fan's uh -huh. perspective, I can appreciate where all of you are coming from. And I'm not like one of those guys like, oh, I like Frankie. I'm not going to listen to their project. Or I don't like Frankie, yeah. so I'm going to only listen to their project. So do you, yeah. do you feel as a musician that that almost causes more of an issue, the fan perspective, um, with these kind of, you know, controversies between bands and member fallouts and mm -hmm. this band's, you know, better than that band because, you know, that guy said something about that band and I'm, I back him and that kind of thing. Do you think that kind of takes away a little bit from the music and, and kind of gets ingrained in fans' minds that they need to pick sides and they can't like certain things because they like other things and whatnot? Well, I mean, here's the thing. We don't care. Right. You know, like, that's as blatant as I could put it. Like, we don't give a shit. Like, the thing is, is uh, with if, if we went into writing music like Emir, where we were doing breakdowns and we were trying to start another heavy band, right. then that'd be one thing. But, like, we're completely not even on the same wavelength right. as what Emir is doing, you know? So people are going to judge, you know, that hard, the hardcore scene, you know, they have those kids that are really, they want the breakdowns, they want the screaming. And, I mean, if you can't get into singing and, you know, just what we're doing, that's fine. It's whatever. Um, but I'll tell you what, 99.9% like .9 of the response that we're getting is we the, they're like, we weren't expecting this, and it's amazing. Um, or, you know, we're just grabbing in a, a whole new genre of, of fans, you know, and I mean, it's, it's working out no matter which way you, which way you put it, you know, and we're not, we're not trying to compete. We're just doing our thing and that's what we're going to do and like us or hate us, it's whatever, you know. <laughs> For sure. And that's why, uh, like, I saw the interview you did with Brian and uh, it was really informative. And that was the thing is I hadn't heard your project yet. And you were talking and everything about how you had this new project. And I, you know, I did. I assumed it was going to be like a heavier project and wasn't really sure what direction it was going to go in. And then hearing it after, uh -huh. you know, like you said, it is definitely it, it may have caught people off guard. and Definitely a lot of people liked it. But um, I thought that was very interesting. And I don't want to obviously... Um, you know, Brian covered a lot of that stuff regarding the, you know, the relationship and whatnot between you guys and, and Frankie and whatnot. But um, I do want to talk a little bit about um, your history with the band, because like you said, you still consider yourself, you know, that is your band. You started it off. And I kind of wanted to talk a little bit about 
um, some background and stuff with uh, your time in the band because I do think obviously Amir is a big band and you have a huge yeah. part of why they are a huge band. You know, without uh -huh. you, they probably wouldn't be around. But um, yeah. I found it very interesting how you guys kind of came together. I wanted to get a little bit more of the background uh, of starting it up because I know obviously you and your brother are from Connecticut. Frankie is from New York. I know you guys uh -huh. met up through message boards. So can you kind of tell yeah. me a little bit about like what that was about? Obviously, you were trying to start a band. What kind of got you linked up with him and the ball rolling? Well, um, I, well me and Joe, obviously, we were playing, just messing around. Um, and I actually, I was playing drums with Joe. We had this uh, band with two drummers. Oh, and wow. uh, they kicked me out. And I was like... <laughs> I was like, forget this, and I I picked up a guitar, not even knowing how to play guitar. Okay, and I sat down in the uh, in the basement with my brother, just writing these songs and trying to learn guitar. And one day, my brother found Frank on a message board or something like that, and uh, and it was exactly what we were looking for. He had the energy, he had something a little bit different, and he came up, and uh, we had a couple other members, a guitar player and bass player. Um, but uh, he ended up, or Frank ended up bringing in uh, Jesse, and as soon as I heard some of his his band stuff, I was like, "Hey, we should like combine forces here. I really like what you're doing." And then me and Jesse, uh, Frank and Joe, just really uh, went and went at it. I mean, it was we were just relentless with everything. I mean, the bands that we had, like playing in front of nobody, playing for no money, starving, like right. just whatever whatever it took. Uh, we did, and it obviously, you know, it worked out. Now, with um, that group, that lineup right there, what w what was the writing like? How did that work? Because I know, obviously, now, you know, Frankie, obviously, he's saying, you know, he is the driving force, whatnot. He is the sole original member. Obviously, he has Josh, who does a lot of that. I don't know, previously, yeah. before Josh joined, who, you know, with that group of guys who was writing and whatnot, um, but uh -huh. when it was your lineup, how how was the writing process? What kind of got thrown around by who, and how did the ball kind of get rolling with that? Well, for the first EP, I mean, we just took songs that I had previously written okay. uh, with another guitar player, and then we kind of reworked them. And then uh, once it came time to write Goodbye to the Gallows and the Respect Issue, um, we rented this little, maybe like... 15 by 15 foot practice space and me and Joe literally slept in there. Um, we had a mattress in there plus his drum set, guitar cabs, and we would wake up and start writing music and then the guys would come and we'd be like, Hey, we got this idea. Um, it was a lot of just me and Joe laying the groundwork of the songs and then them kind of sprinkling their ideas in here and there. And they would come in with ideas. Um, so it was, uh, I mean, it was a lot of me and Joe, but it was still, um, you know, a little bit of group effort, more so on uh, on um, the respect issue. But, yeah, it was definitely a grind. For sure. So, Frankie was the lyric guy at the time? and or Yeah, you, you I mean, had... like, even with, even with um, I remember Goodbye to the Gallows, I don't even think I heard much of his vocals. Like, we just had the music written, oh, okay. and we went, we went up to Massachusetts to record with uh, Zeus, and... Uh, Frank just, uh, we trusted Frank. I mean, and he definitely did a good job. Um, you know, so he just went in and, and uh, recorded over what we did. It, was, it wasn't it was really anything of we um, guided him with right. subject, subject matter or anything like that, you know. Now, I, I always found this interesting. Because it, it, you guys are one of those bands that get grouped into that category. A lot of people make fun of your band because of like the tabs everyone's always like oh zero 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 those are the mirror tabs <sighs> how do you yeah. feel being you know obviously one of the original members of that band that people group you into that do you just kind of like not... think it's funny at this point it's like whatever or like does it you know is that kind of like upset you no i mean i could care less i mean say whatever <laughs> you want you know like emir did what we did and everybody else is doing what they're doing and Honestly, and now I'm obviously with Lakeshore doing this, and right. you're not going to say zero one zero. You know <laughs> what I'm saying? So, like, <laughs> don't matter to me. Just say whatever you want. For sure. 
Um, another thing I thought was interesting is obviously your time in a mirror. You guys did a track with Carl from Misery Signals, uh, mm -hmm. which was the Sleeping Princess in a Devil's Castle. And then he's actually yep. on the new EP as well. So uh, obviously, yep. I thought that was really cool to have the cross. Carl worked with you in both your projects. So obviously, I'm assuming he's a good friend of yours. Yeah. Uh, well, but Misery, I, well, we all really always love the Misery Signals. Like right. they're one of our favorite bands, and they're just they were so underrated. Um, but uh, we ended up on one of our first major tours with uh, Emir was with misery signals and we just hit it off and carl's always been a really good friend um so with this uh like this new track kings being a heavier track um i don't know it just felt right i just asked him i was like yeah you want to jump on a, on a track um you know it's a heavier heavier uh heavier song and he said yes and jesse from tony danza said yes and I don't know. It was just like one of those things. I remember listening to like Hate Breed. I remember they did a song with like the dude from Il Nino oh, and yeah. the dude from uh, E Town Concrete. Yep. And I don't know. I always like guest spots and stuff. You know, it's like we're all here for the same reason and we're all friends. You know, let's uh, let's do the thing. Yeah, for sure. I thought it was interesting too, just the the song titles itself, because it was the new one's Kings, and then the old one was Sleeping Princess in a Devil's Castle. So, like, obviously, <laughs> I know they're not related at all, but just the the song titles itself had that kind of the correlation. I thought that was interesting that he was on both. I I honestly never even put that together. <laughs> <laughs> at first, I was I like, "Oh, is this kind of like a part two? And then I was like, "Nah, it can't be," because I know obviously the the <laughs> song titles from Amir were kind of just you know that was another thing I wanted to ask you about the song titles. Okay. You guys are one of those bands where the song titles don't necessarily relate to the song, and they're you know these sentences or these sayings from movies or whatnot. What kind of what was the process of picking a song title, and and was there a certain reason or like what I I, I always thought that was interesting. With which band? With a mirror, because the, the uh, song oh. titles are like these long sentences. They have nothing to do with the song. They're references to uh. movies and whatnot. I, I kind of wanted to know what was the reason for that. Um, I don't know. I think we just wanted. I, I think it came from Tony Danza because they had like these insane, oh yeah, uh, song titles, and then we were like, oh, that's cool. Like, so we just picked like funny titles or whatever i don't know and uh yeah that's just the way it worked out oh, okay I don't know. <laughs> but um i actually i was looking into it the other day and i didn't realize it because i obviously had seen the album cover so many different times and i never clicked mm -hmm. that that's who it was but you guys had kurt yeah. angle on the cover of respect issue and i had no yeah. idea until the other day are you guys big wrestling fans uh no it was I just kind of like he... it worked out to have him on there well, it was more, uh, I think we wanted like a, we wanted a boxing team and, um, Tony, the owner of victory, I think he's friends with Kurt Angle and oh, okay. he asked him to just step in and do it. So that's where that came about. Okay. Cause I didn't know if there was, you know, I, I honestly didn't click until just the other day when I looked at it again. I was like, Oh, I had no yeah. idea. I'd looked at that album cover so many times, but uh, yeah. I thought that was really interesting. But, um, that's all I got for you. I had a great time talking. Is there anything you want to add wrapping up? Um, yeah, I mean, you know, this new project Lakeshore, um, you know, is, is we're, we're getting this stuff out there fast. Just, uh, you know, keep in touch with us. Um, you know, on Facebook, you could find us at Lakeshore band. The website is, uh, lakeshoreofficial.com. And, uh, we've got a lot of cool stuff in the works. So, um, you know, if anybody's a fan, uh, then, you know, definitely drop us a line. You know, we respond to uh, pretty much everybody. And uh, other than that, I appreciate uh, you doing the interview because I was thinking about this before, um, earlier this morning. I remember going to in your practices, and uh, while I was driving down there, uh, WSOU was one of, one of the stations that I always, always <laughs> listen to. So it's cool to, uh, you know, finally be able to uh, get on your show. But, uh yeah, other than that, man, Lakeshore and get into it and keep in touch and you'll be hearing more from us. For sure, for sure. And again, I appreciate your time. This was a great time talking to you, man. Absolutely. Appreciate it. Thank you. Of course. No problem.